Um, all right. So welcome to your slow flow class. Um, we're gonna start on our bellies. So you're gonna need either blocks or pillows. Um, if you're using blocks, I like them on the lowest level. And then if that feels okay, you can always take them up onto a higher level. So place them about shoulder width distance and then slowly just lower yourself down so that your fronts of your shoulders land on blocks. Hands lay down beside your body, palms face up. And then forehead to the earth. And you might need to kind of adjust this as you start to settle in. You just figure out where you need to shift so that you can get comfortable. And then once you've landed somewhere that is comfortable, you can start to bring your awareness just towards this melting sensation of your body. Right, start to feel your shoulder blades slide towards one another. The space along your spine softening. Maybe your forehead resting heavier into your mat, pressing towards the earth. Just allowing these props, your blocks or your pillows to hold you up. Take a couple of deep full belly breaths and feel your belly press in towards the earth, expanding. And then when you exhale, softening, relaxing. So in today's practice of slow flow, we'll all be focused on being here within this moment and just being present with whatever shows up. So really having that time to be with yourself, your body, thoughts, sensations. Gently you can start to bring one hand to your prop and just take out one side and then the other. Bring your hands to cradle your cheeks, either side, whatever's most comfortable. And then bend into your knees and just gently sway your feet side to side. Lower legs like windshield wipers. And the next time your toes come up through center, you can gently release down. Bring your chin to your mat. Walk your fingertips off of your mat. Elbows point up to the sky and palms are lifted. As you inhale, peel yourself away from the earth. And then as you exhale, roll your left shoulder forward. Look over to the right. Inhale, breath to lift up through center. And then exhale, lower your right shoulder and look to the left. And then just move side to side two more times. So inhale comes up through center, exhale to dip. 
Inhale to rise and exhale to twist. Take one more movement to each side, just flowing with slow breath. And then the next time that you move through center, you'll gently release all the way down. Plant your hands underneath your shoulders. Bring your big toes together to touch. Press into the earth and slowly peel away. Send your hips back to your heels. Knees pull wide to a child's pose. Notice the lengthening that's happening in your low back especially after those really gentle back bends. And see if you can take a little bit more length by pressing your fingertips down into the ground and then slide your shoulders towards your tailbone. Imagine your hips resting heavier towards your heels. And then allow your breath to expand out to the left and to the right. Allow the back of your body to rise as you inhale and lower as you exhale. Take a moment to just simply notice how this feels. Imagine you're rounding up like a scared cat. So you're going to slowly start to lift your hips away from your heels. Slide your hands under your shoulders and curl and round your spine, pulling belly button up to the ceiling. And then on your exhale, slowly lower to a neutral spine. Walk your knees hip width distance. So they land underneath your hips. And then take your hands when handprint ahead. So this sometimes helps for this. All right, Sufi grinds. You're going to create circles with your hips. So start to shift your hips over to the right side. Circle your hips back towards your heels over to the left. And then circle your hips forward, lowering them closer to your mat, and then over to the right. Now, if this is a lot for your knees, you can always place a pillow underneath them. You'll notice the larger the circle, the more sensation that you feel. And just play with whatever depth your body is craving, knowing you can always ease back or go deeper. Take one more circle in this direction, and then we'll switch to the other side. So start moving opposite way of where you were. Notice the tension or resistance and where it lands in your body. And see if you can just gracefully move and navigate through that. Take one more grind in this direction. And then you'll come all the way back through center. Tuck your toes under. And walk your fingertips back towards your knees so that you sit your hips onto your heels. Reach back around and tuck your pinky toes. They like to escape. And then if this feels like too much, you can just simply take your hands forward. You might even flip your uh, palms or your wrist to face forward just to stretch out the fronts of your wrists. Otherwise, if you're okay to sit here, interlace your fingers behind your back and allow your knuckles to pull heavy towards the earth as your chest lifts up towards the ceiling, maybe a slight tilt of your chin. A whole lot of sensation in this pose. And you slow it down to just sit with that feeling. Allow yourself some curiosity to explore. 
where you can soften and let go. And if you do have your hands on your legs, gently release. You can unflip your hands and slide them forward back to tabletop. Untuck your toes and then sit your hips back onto your heels again. So this time tops of your feet are on your mat. You're welcome to stay here. Again, you can always lean more forward or you can also play with just leaning back. Maybe you even press the tops of your feet into your mat and float your knees away. So working into that deep ankle and toe stretch on the front side now, maybe even a little bit into the quadriceps. And then if your knees are lifted, gently release them to the earth. Walk your fingertips all the way forward and meet into a tabletop. Tuck your toes under, float your knees off of your mat, zipping your belly button up to your spine, hovering tabletop. Imagine that you're pulling your wrists and your toes towards one another that will really fire up your core. And then on your next inhale breath, raise your hips towards the sky, straighten out your legs, downward facing dog. Might feel a little bit sticky as this is the first down dog we've been in through practice. So you can always pedal out your feet, just bending one knee at a time. Get to know this shape within your body, knowing that it will change throughout practice. Just figuring out where your groove is within this moment. And from your down dog, walk your feet just a little bit wider, maybe towards the edges of your mat. Soft bend into your knees. Walk your hands to the back of your mat, and then turn your heels in, yogi squat. Toes turn out. Start to sink your hips down. All right, so this one might, again, feel a little sticky, so we're gonna add in movement. Hands to the earth, and you just kind of sway side to side. So you pick up one heel at a time. You're finding just a little bit of movement for the hips. You can always keep your arms onto your inner thighs. Just be mindful of your knees that there's no twisting happening. And I'll come all the way back through center and then just fold for three breaths. So walk your fingertips out in front of you. Drape your chin towards your chest. Take a full breath in and a long exhale breath out. Sink in. Inhale to rise through the back body and exhale to soften. One more slow, smooth breath. Walk your hands <clears throat> underneath your shoulders, press into your palms, float your hips up to a fold, and then turn your toes towards the top of your mat so feet are parallel. Bend deeply into both knees. Left hand or fingertips can come into the center of your mat or left forearm onto your thigh. As you inhale, twist open to the right, kick your right hip out. Right hand can come up towards your hip or reach all the way up towards the ceiling. And then as you exhale, bend both knees and fold forward. Switch sides, right fingertips to the earth or forearm to your thigh. And then inhale, twist open, other side. And then as you exhale, fold. Right, one more to each side. Inhale, twist open to the right. And exhale to fold. Inhale to twist open to the left. And exhale to fold. Inhale, breath to halfway lift and lengthen. Exhale, drape forward. Walk your fingertips towards the top of your mat for high plank. Shoulders stuck over the top of your wrists. Hips in line with the rest of your body. Take a full breath in 
And then as you exhale, ripple through your spine, downward facing dog, hips lift all the way up towards the sky. Let's do that two more times. As you inhale, slow roll forward to high plank. And as you exhale, lift your hips up and back downward facing dog. One more time, just like that. And looking forward, step your right to the top of your mat. Take an inhale breath to halfway lift and lengthen. And exhale to fold. Bend into your knees. Inhale breath. <clears throat> Circle the arms all the way up. And then exhale. Land your hands through heart center. Okay. Inhale breath. Circle the arms all the way up. Exhale, sit back into your chair. Okay, so feet about hip width distance apart. Take a full breath in. Exhale to fold. Inhale, lengthen your spine. And exhale to fold. Step your right toes back, lower your right knee down. Use your inhale breath to shine your heart forward. Fingertips will stay to the earth or blocks. And then as you exhale, send your hips back, straighten out your front leg, half splits. And it's gonna move through this a couple more times. So inhale, start to shine your heart forward into your monkey lunge. And exhale, half splits, fold over top of your extended leg. <clears throat> Find the slow, smooth rhythm of your breath. Maybe even allowing your breath to get a little bit louder. Maybe just taking up more space in your consciousness. Let's take one more round of breath and movement. And the next time that you land in your monkey lunge, you'll tuck your back toes to lift your knee. Keep your right hand rooted, or you can always grab a block if you'd like. Add in a twist. Inhale, your left fingertips come all the way up. Squeeze your inner thighs towards one another. And then as you exhale, gently release your left hand towards your mat. Both hands root down. Step back, downward facing dog. Walk your big toes together to touch. As you inhale, take your right toes to the sky. Bend into your right knee and stack into your hips. Peeling your side body open. As you inhale, rise your left heel away from the earth. As you exhale, lower your left heel back down. Two more just like that. Inhale to rise, strengthening the back body. Exhale to lower, lengthening. One more inhale to rise. This time step your right toes between your hands. Keep your back knee lifted and then rise tall fingertips towards the sky, high lunge. Notice what's happening with your rib cage. So sometimes in high lunge, we really flare open the chest, which ends up dumping a lot into the low back. So see if you can knit your ribs towards one another. You can also think of pulling your hip bones up towards your bottom two ribs. Okay. And if you need a soft bend into that back knee, that's always available. Maybe even close down your eyes. And if you want to take a different variation with the arms, perhaps you interlace your fingers behind your back, shrugging your shoulders onto your spine and then just allowing your chest to crack open while also still knitting the ribs. Squeezing shoulder blades together, really feeling into the shape. And gently release the grips of your fingertips as you inhale, sweep the arms all the way up. And then as you exhale, open up, warrior two. Warrior two. Press through the pinky side edge with both feet. And check in with your front knee that it's landing over top of the ankle 
and that your front knee isn't falling inside. So that's why we press to the pinky side edge. Beautiful. And then finding a bit of a flow here as you inhale, straighten out your front leg, reach both hands up towards the sky. And then as you exhale, bend into your front knee, warrior two, palms pressed down. Inhale, breath, lift your fingertips up. And exhale, warrior two. One more time, inhale, breath, reach up, lengthen. And exhale, warrior two. Straighten out your front leg, turn and pivot your right toes to the side of your mat. Take your hands onto your hips. Roll your shoulders once or twice. As you inhale, pull your elbows back, lift through your chest. And as you exhale, soft bend into your knees, forward fold, wide-legged variation. And you can just root your hands down or you might wrap your hands around your ankles or calves. Take as much of a bend in your knees as you need to take any uh, tension out of the low back if it's feeling like too much. Let your gaze fall back between your legs so head is resting heavy. You can even shake your head yes or no. Root your hands towards your mat again as you inhale, lengthen out your spine. And as you exhale, start to turn and pivot all 10 toes towards the top of your mat so you land in pyramid. Grab a block if you have one for your left fingertips. Your left hand to the block or to the top left corner of your mat. Inhale, breath, lengthen. And then exhale, start to twist. Right hand comes all the way up towards your right hip or reaches all the way up towards the sky. You'll feel your inner thighs pivot towards one another. Or you can also think about pressing your right heel back towards your left toes and left toes towards your right heel. And then as you exhale, gently release your right fingertips down. Lower your back knee. And then for lizard, heel toe your right foot further outside of your right hand. You might have to play with this. You might need your right foot to slide more forward. And um, pick up your right toes and make sure they point out to the side. So you have a bit of that external rotation. Back toes can untuck. And you can always play with a bit of a twist, right hand to the inner thigh. If you're craving quadricep opening, you can pick up your back toes and maybe play with a bind, right hand to your left foot. Or you can always lower down to forearms, keeping the upper body straight in alignment. Wherever you are, letting yourself settle into this shape for about five full breaths. If you are in a bind or twist or down on forearms, slowly come back up onto your hands. Send your hips back enough that you can heel toe your right foot in between your hands. Tuck your back toes to lift your knee and then just step to a fold at the top of your mat. Reach for opposite elbows and just allow your body to dangle. Maybe a gentle sway side to side. Release the grip of your fingertips. Take an inhale breath, halfway lift and lengthen. And exhale to fold. Bend into your knees. Inhale breath, sweep the arms all the way up. Big full body stretch. And exhale, gather hands to heart center. <clears throat> inhale breath, circle the arms. Exhale, sit your hips back for a chair. Just one breath. Hold for your inhale. And then exhale, drape and fold. 
Inhale to halfway lift and lengthen. Exhale, plant your hands, step your left toes back and lower your left knee down. Keep your hands rooted or even onto your fingertips or onto blocks and move through your flow. Inhale to your monkey lunge and exhale, hips pull back, half splits. And so as you have more time with this movement forward and back, you can think about finding grace to maybe make the movement a little bit smoother. Maybe you still feel that resistance, but you learn to soften into it. So still moving through whatever shows up, but in a way that you are fully present and available for. Let's take one more round of breath and movement. And the next time you come to your monkey lunge, you can always take a block under that left hand if you'd like. Tuck your back toes to lift your knee and then add in a twist. Right hand either to low back or all the way up. And spiral the chest open. Draw inner thighs towards one another so your right hip is pulling towards the back of your mat. And then as you exhale, gently release your right hand down, step back, downward facing dog. Walk your big toes together to touch. Inhale, left toes to the sky, bend into your left knee, stack into your hip. Peel your side body open. And as you inhale, rise your right heel high. As you exhale, lower your right heel down. Two more just like that. Inhale, lift, and exhale, ground. Last one, inhale to rise up. As you exhale, step your left toes softly between your hands. Rise tall, high lunge. Fingertips sweep up. And then play with this shape. So whether you need to take a little bit more depth, maybe you focus on the core, so instead of crunching into the low back by just flopping the front side open, that you're strong through the abdomen. You can take the opposite grip of fingertips behind your back so it feels a little bit funky. And then if you're really feeling like you want to connect and maybe challenge balance, you can close down your eyes. And start to build this trust with self that it's okay to be where you are, even if you can't see everything. Okay. <laughs> and if you stumble out, that's all good. Just come back. All right, on your next inhale, you'll scoop the arms up and then exhale, let's open up warrior. Once again, taking a moment to ground before finding movement. So really pressing through your feet as though you're sinking your feet in towards the earth. You soften your shoulders down your back and reach through your fingertips. As you inhale, straighten up that front leg, reach your hands up, feel like you're growing taller. And then exhale, keep that length in the spine and bend into your front knee, warrior two. Inhale, breath. Lift fingertips up, straighten out your legs, and exhale, warrior two. Last one, inhale, reach up, exhale, warrior two. Inhale, straighten out your front leg, reach your hands up, and exhale, take your hands to your hips and turn your left toes to the side of your mat, so feet are parallel. Roll your shoulders up and back. As you inhale, pull your elbows back, lift through the chest. As you exhale, hinge with a flat back, soft bend in your knees. Hands come all the way down towards the earth. Now you can take some movement here, or you can add in some twists. Okay, I'll leave this variation up to each of you so that you have a moment to just get curious and play with your practice.
then last couple of breaths if you need to switch sides or play with a little bit more depth. And then gently you'll start to walk your hands underneath your shoulders as you inhale lengthen through your spine as you exhale walk your hands to the top of your mat and turn and pivot all ten toes forward okay, i always like a block for this one but you don't need it if you don't have one right fingertips walk towards the top right corner and then as you inhale twist open to your twisted pyramid if your back heel lifts a little bit, that's okay. Continue to squeeze inner thighs towards one another. Maybe your left fingertips even sweep up towards the sky. Take one more big lengthening breath. And then exhale, left hand towards the earth. Lower your right knee down. And then heel toe your left toes outside of your left hand for lizard. So you'll start to sink your right hip towards the earth. Make sure your left toes point out to the side. And then hands can stay rooted or you can add in that twist or binding with the back toes. Optional to take forearms onto a block or the ground. Then you're in this shape for about Five slow, smooth breaths. See if you can give all of your attention back to your body and just feel your way through this. Feel what comes up. Not just the good stuff, but the hard stuff too. Gently, you can start to release grips of your hands so they root back onto your mat. Send your hips back enough that you can heel toe your left toes towards the center. And then tuck your back toes to lift your knee and spring off of that foot to land into a fold. Take an inhale breath to halfway lift and lengthen. And exhale to fold. Bend into your knees, inhale, breath, circle the arms all the way up, and exhale, gather your hands through to heart center. All right. Inhale, breath, circle the arms, exhale, sit back into your chair. All right, slower than you'd like. You can always take hands onto hips or hands forward if this is a lot for shoulders. You're gonna start to sit your hips all the way towards the earth until you come into boat pose. So shins will start to flow up about parallel. I like to wrap hands behind hamstrings and then just roll your shoulders up and back. You can play with squeezing your thighs in towards your chest. And then maybe even play with taking your fingertips off of your hamstrings, still keeping that length through the spine. Optional to float your toes up, straightening out your legs. And then on a slow count of five, we're gonna to lower towards the earth. If this feels like a lot for your hip flexors, just lower your toes to uh, grace the earth, and then you'll start to expand out. So lowering for five, four, three, two, one. All right, take a big full body stretch, full breath in, and exhale, soften. Inhale, breath lengthen and exhale to boat so on your exhale lift all the way back up to that v-sit and then slowly we're going to start to lower again for five four three two one inhale take a big full breath and exhale up into your boat okay, this is the last time 
and a slow lower for five, four, three, two, one. Inhale, breath lift all the way up. Whoa, it's getting more challenging. <laughs> and come all the way up to your boat. All right, this is where it's gonna get different. Release your feet down, crisscross to your legs, and then just gently fold over top of your shins. You let that, let that last little bit go. <laughs> we got some company this morning. All right, we'll slowly come all the way back up. And you're going to untangle your legs and extend your left leg forward. I think it's not helping here. Send your left leg forward and bend into your right foot. Okay, or right knee. Take your left hand to your right foot and then just play with kicking your right heel out in front of you. So you can stay here, body facing forward, or, oh my goodness, this is disaster. <laughs> or you can start to walk your right fingertips back and play with a twist. Okay. Optional, just like you did in boats, so you want to keep that tall spine. You can always take your right hand off of the ground and play a little bit with some balance. Nice. Great place. All right. So if you're already here, you can start to release your right fingertips down and just bend into your right knee. Okay, allow your right knee to fall out to the side. Turn and face your extended leg. As you inhale, circle the arms up. And then as you exhale, forward fold over top of your left leg. Inhale, breath to halfway lift and lengthen. And exhale to fold. Take three full breaths. Feeling the length into the back of your left leg. Some opening into your right hip. And walk your fingertips all the way up the length of your leg. And you'll gently pick up your right knee and extend your right leg out. Bend into your left knee. Take your left foot into your right hand. And then just play with kicking your heel up. So it doesn't have to be fully straight. It's okay if it's a little bit bent. Left fingertips can help stabilize. And you're welcome to keep your heart facing forward. Or you can start to play with a twist, twisting your heart towards the left side of your mat. Maybe you play with extending left fingertips back and working a little bit into core and stability. And so wherever you are, remembering to breathe. And if your left fingertips are lifted, you can gently release them down. Untwist your body, bend into your left knee and place your left foot onto the ground. Allow your left knee to splay out to the side. As you inhale, circle the arms up, grow tall through the spine. And then as you exhale, start to hinge and fold forward. Take an inhale breath to halfway lift and lengthen and exhale to fold three full smooth breaths take your time to walk fingertips all the way back up in towards your hips Lift up your left knee, bend into your right knee. All right, now if this doesn't feel good for your spine, you don't have to do it. You can just meet us into chair on our next pose. Otherwise, hands come behind your knees and you're gonna just start to roll back. So you're gonna roll back, knees into chest and just get some momentum. So rocking and rolling a couple of times. And then the goal is to eventually rock enough that your feet will root down and then you can press up into chair. Okay. Once you've landed here, straighten out your legs and take your hands to your heart center. Right. Take a full breath in. 
then a long exhale, breath out. All right, we're coming into that same shape you're just in, but now it's standing. So adding in a little bit more balance. Okay, start to float your right knee up towards hip height. Okay. Now you're gonna take your left hand onto your right shin, right hand onto your hip. So you're welcome to stay here. You can play with twisting open, opening your right shoulder up. Or if you want to play with that extra challenge, reach for either the bottom of your left foot or the pinky side edge, sorry, of your right foot, so the foot that's lifted. And then you can play with kicking your heel out into your hand. Okay, so it's going to be a little bit more depth, so you might not get that fully straight leg, and that's okay. okay if you tip over, you just come all the way back. You have a couple more breaths to just play, maybe laugh if, it gets a little wonky. And then you'll slowly start to unwind and release your right foot down. Roll your shoulders out once or twice. And take Tadasana Mountain Pose, palms face forward, close down your eyes. Take a deep breath in, feeling your chest rise up. And a long, smooth breath out. Let yourself root through your feet. Inhale, breath. Grow a little bit taller through the spine. And exhale, let that go. Hands can come back to heart center, finding the other side. So you'll take your left knee to start to rise up. You can just take your right hand onto your left shin, left hand onto your hip, and you're welcome to just start here, play with some balance. Maybe play with twisting open out to the left. Optional to reach for pinky side edge, or if it's better, big toe, and play with kicking out into your right hand. Yeah, and don't worry if you fall out. This is a pretty challenging posture. And so it's really just the best way to find balance is to lose it and come back again and just play with it. Uh-oh. Awesome. So if you are still twisted, you can slowly start to unwind, take your left toes towards the ground. Roll your shoulders out and take three big breaths in Tadasana. Full breath in and long exhale breath out. Last two. And last one. All right, inhale, breath, circle the arms all the way up. Exhale, hands forward fold. Inhale to halfway lift and lengthen. Exhale, plant your hands, lower back onto your knees. Make your way onto your seat and we're gonna lower onto our backs. Okay. So once you've landed on your back, you can hug your knees into your chest. Maybe even a gentle rock side to side. And then happy baby, you can separate your knees to the sides of your rib cage. You might just stay here with your hands, or hands might reach for inside or outside edges of your feet. You can always play with extending out one foot at a time. And you can rock side to side. Just taking some movement that feels right for your body. And gently release the grips of your feet and allow your feet to float down towards the ground. We're gonna close off with a couple of twists. So crossing your left ankle over top of your right thigh. Slowly lower your knees all the way over to the right side. So your left foot's gonna root onto the ground. Right hand can always wrap your left foot or ankle. 
And maybe your gaze comes the opposite direction than your knees. If this twist variation isn't available, you can always unravel your legs and just drop both knees over to the right, legs stacked. If you want a little bit more hip opening, you can play with rolling your left hip towards the earth. Maybe your left knee draws away from your body. can come back up through center. Inhale to unwind and slowly release your feet. Walk your feet out wide, drop your knees through center. You're welcome to just pause here or you can always take a little bit of movement, drop your knees side to side. And when you're ready, you can heel toe your feet back, hip width distance. We'll find the other side right ankle crosses your left thigh and then slowly lower your knees all the way over to the left right arm can extend out gaze over your right shoulder and play with whatever depth your body needs so if you need that extra stretch maybe your right hip rolls towards the earth or your knee draws away from your body Try to still find some softness wherever you've landed. And allow yourself to come back into this moment. Just check in with how you're feeling. Slowly unwind from your twist and scoop your hips into the middle of your mat. Walk your feet wide, drop your knees through center. Always optional to add in movement or you're welcome to just stay in this shape, allowing your hips to reset from the external rotation. We're moving towards Shavasana. So if you need to get comfy, put on any sweaters or socks, you're welcome to just set yourself up to really sink in. If there's any final movements, like you want to windshield wiper your knees left and right, that's always available. And then eventually just straightening your legs out and allowing your hands to let down beside your body, palms face up. Close down your eyes once you've landed in Shavasana and just start to bring your attention to the bottoms of your feet, your feet which have walked many miles on this earth that just walked you through today's practice. And we'll continue to walk you through the rest of your day, week, year. Let them rest heavy, backs of your heels into your mat. As you move up your body, just letting yourself sink in. Even acknowledging any tension that you notice along the way. You can even thank that tension as necessary friction to create change. And 
you continue to scan up your body, maybe moving towards your heart, shoulders, that often carry so much weight. I'm just checking in with how they feel this morning. Maybe a little bit lighter or more open. At the same time, perhaps feeling some other things that your heart or your shoulders are carrying or holding that maybe aren't necessarily serving you, but just being able to sit with that, embrace it. And finally, bring your attention towards your face, and just softening into the skin around your eyes, your nose, your mouth. Letting all lines of worry drip away. Maybe even curling up the corners of your mouth into a really subtle, gentle smile. Moving slowly allows us to be with all parts of ourselves rather than constantly moving away from the parts that are still in transition or we're still working on. That we get to really take full inventory of how we feel moment to moment, which makes our next movements more authentic and knowledgeable. We're coming from a place of compassion and kindness towards self. So as you just check in with how you feel now, perhaps this gives you some wisdom of how you might need to move through your day, of places you need to be kinder to, maybe places you need to get moving, soften or kick into gear. over these last couple of moments of Shavasana, I'll leave you in silence on my end and stillness to just get to know this version of yourself. To slow it down and just lean in to you. You are welcome to stay exactly as you are and close off your practice on your back. If you're ready to come out of Shavasana, you can just gently bring in some movements, head, fingertips, toes, allowing
in those movements to eventually roll you to either side and you're also welcome to just pause there in fetal position. Or you can press up to seated and gather hands at heart center. But whatever you choose, take your time. Thank you for practicing with me today. Mm, sending you so much love and wisdom moving forward to just lean into the moments when they start to feel too fast or overwhelming and take a couple of deep breaths. Slow it all down so that you gain that knowledge of how to move forward. So from the bottom of my heart, so much love. Namaste.